Okay, my friends, here it is. The video that is gonna explain to you everything you need to know in order to successfully turn fresh ground into thriving garden soil next year. Now, to do this, I'm going to explain the philosophy a bit, and then I'm gonna take and show you utilizing footage from my recent consulting trip to Tennessee. So, in order to create the ideal thriving soil for next year as quickly as possible, we will utilize our two greatest allies in the garden, and that is the biological processes and time. The time is very important. We can't rush these things. So, as you will see in the footage, we will first de-establish all the plants that are, that are there already, the grasses and the weeds and all of that. We will then add fertility and then re-establish the plants that we choose so that we can be building soil all winter long. Because remember, only a living root being in the ground has the ability to build soil. Because soil building is a plant-driven process whereby the plant captures carbon out of the atmosphere and pumps it into the earth, enriching the soil. It's all powered by the sun. It's magnificent. So we're gonna utilize that. Now, straight away in this method, okay, there's, there's two ways you can go about it. One is if you want to do a one-time initial till to the earth. If you have either a tractor or a rototiller, or if you're robust enough, do it with a shovel or a broad fork, whatever it is. But we are going to, uh, we, we have to cultivate the soil this, this one time initially with, with something manually. Because it's very beneficial, my friends. Don't let that put you off. A one-time initial till is ideal for breaking up the hard pan and for uh, uh, de-establishing the plants that are already there. And that will allow the roots of our selected plants to penetrate much deeper. And then we don't till from then out. But a one-time initial till is very useful. I will make another video in, in the very near future about how to establish uh, a garden bed for next year with completely no-till, not even a shovel. So uh, be on the lookout for that one as well. So uh, let us get into it and I will show you exactly what I'm talking about and then I will we'll come back and I'll say a few of the specifics. Okay, here we are in Tennessee and we are gonna utilize a piece of heavy machinery. Likewise, you can use a rototiller or a shovel or whatever it is. But what's very important is that we de-establish the plants that are there. So we're gonna make multiple passes with this uh, tiller. And the first one is a little bit deep, the second one's deeper. And we want to really break up what is already there and established as deep as possible. Breaking new ground on the watermelon patch here at the Tennessee plot. Now, if your native soil is decent enough to grow in, I highly suggest this method because we are using what is already there, the native earth. We're not bringing in dump truck loads of compost. We don't have to use, you know, thousands of square feet of cardboard or anything like that. This is a wonderful method for utilizing and building native soil. Just make sure it's all broken up real good and de-establish the grass. The next thing we're going to do is add fertility. Now here, we have chosen well-composted chicken litter. That is because that's what was available and down the road, and it's very powerful. And so we're going to add a good amount of fertility. And since we're doing it in the fall time, you can add fresh manure of any kind. And it doesn't matter what kind, but add plenty of the manure. This is very important. You can use compost if you want, just make sure that it's free of the weed seeds. Then you will incorporate it all one final time. So this here, what I'm about to show you, has been, um, it was passed over three times and then the fertility was added and then passed over a fourth and final time. And now this, what was just grass uh, an, an hour or two ago is now this nice fluffy uh, soil. Now, since we are in Tennessee, Zone 7, we're going to be using Crimson Clover. Remember, Zone 6 and above, Crimson Clover. Zone 5 and below is Mammoth Red Clover. Now, we are going to broadcast this evenly on the plot. And I'm utilizing a spreader. You don't have to, of course. You can absolutely spread it by hand. But for this large of an area, we're actually doing two plots. And so uh, using a spreader will help you to ensure that you don't um, miss any spots and that it's nice and even. Now you want to spread it heavier than you think you would have to spread it because these plants can grow very closely together. It's perfectly fine. So spread it nice and heavy and then you simply incorporate it. 
Now, we're not burying it. We're just incorporating it, barely uh, uh, fluffing up so that it makes direct contact with the soil. Now, this part is not absolutely necessary. You can just uh, leave it on top. And then next May, it will look something like this. This is a field I did in a similar manner a few years back, and I used a combination here of winter rye and crimson clover. So as you can see, it is bursting with life and fertility, and it has been building soil all, all fall, winter, and early spring. It is the first week of May here in northern Indiana, zone 5B, 6A, and it is approaching time to terminate these cover crops. Now you can see here that the crimson clover is nice and, uh, and in bloom, uh, being uh, attracting all sorts of beneficial pollinators and pumping nitrogen into the soil, which is vitally important. Then we're going to terminate the cover crop, and there's a number of ways, and I'll have videos on that in the future, but this is one way, uh, especially for smaller plots, you just crimp it down. And that gives you a kind of, see I made this primitive tool that can crimp it down and it works pretty good actually uh, so it makes like a living mulch it doesn't terminate the root right away uh, or you can cut it down you see here uh, I, I cut that down maybe a week prior to uh, crimping the rest of it but the crimping is also a good method I'll explain videos about this in the future I just want you to see there's multiple methods and you see here we are utilizing the uh, string trimmer like an electric scythe where we are just uh, uh, cutting it down at ground level and we are then going to compost it in the liquid fertilizer method and feed it back to the plants. But I'll have videos on all that in the spring. Okay, so there are a few specific things that you have to keep in mind when utilizing the cover crop and I'll explain those in just a moment. But first, I wanna make sure that we're all on the same page here. So as the outdoor season of growing is coming to an end, the indoor season is just about to begin, my friends. So you can utilize the links in the description to get your supplies so that you can grow along with the channel this winter. We're gonna be utilizing mushrooms. I'm gonna show you guys how to grow mushrooms. Uh, even if you've never grown mushrooms before, you're gonna learn uh, this winter. Also, microgreens and sprouts. We're gonna be getting the fresh living life force all winter long. So see, my uh, lion's mane has already started to fruit. So uh, utilize the link in the description. Also utilize the promo code GARDENVIKING. You get 10% off and that helps the channel as well. So uh, just wanted to tell you that. Get your supplies. We'll be starting those videos in about three weeks to a month. Now, the things that I wanted to tell you about the cover crops you have to keep in mind are what you're going to plant there next year. So I'm gonna direct you to this video here and that is going to explain to you whether or not a cover crop is right for you and which cover crop to plant and then you have to have some foresight on the termination method. So I will see you next time, my friends.